Welcome to my and folklore. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to talk about the leprechaun. A leprechaun is a fairy-like creature in Irish mythology. There are often mischievous creatures who spend their time making shows or hiding away their coins in hidden pots of gold at the end of rainbows. Leprechauns may grant wishes to humans who capture them. According to fables, leprechauns are tiny entities that normally take the form of an old man in a red or green coat. Most leprechaun legends can be traced back to the 8th century tales of water spirits which were known as Lucorpin which means small body. It is said that these spirits merged with a household fairy and developed a penchant for heavy drinking so no cellar was safe according to other researchers. The term leprechaun actually comes from the Irish term leek brogan which means shoemaker. The least known reference to the leprechaun appears in the medieval tale known as the adventure of Fergus son of Leety. The text contains an episode in which adventurer Fergus son of Leety, king of Ulster, falls asleep on the beach and wakes to himself being dragged into the sea by three leucopain. He captures his abductors, who grant him three wishes in exchange for release. The leprechaun is said to be a solitary creature whose principal occupation is making and mending shows and who enjoys practical jokes. According to Yeats, the great wealth of these fairies comes from the treasure crocs, buried of old in wartime, which they have uncovered and appropriated. According to Mcanally, the leprechaun is the son of an evil spirit and a degenerate fairy and is not wholly good nor wholly evil. The leprechaun originally had a different appearance depending on where an island he was found. Prior to the 20th century, it was generally held that the leprechaun wore red, not green. Samuel Lover, writing in 1831, describes the leprechaun as He quite a view in his dress, notwithstanding, for he wears a red square-cut coat, richly laced with gold, and inexpressible, of the same, popped hat, shoes, and buckles. According to Yeats, the solitary fairies, like the leprechaun, wear red jackets, whereas the trooping fairies wear green. The leprechaun's jacket is seven rows of buttons, with seven buttons to each row. On the western coast, he writes, the red jacket is covered by a freeze one, and in Ulster the creature wears a cocked hat, and when he is up to anything unusually mischievous, he leaps onto a wall and spins, balancing himself on the point of the hat with his heel in the air. According to Mcanally, the universal leprechaun is described as, he is about three feet high, and is dressed in a little red jacket or roundabout, with red breeches buckled at the knee, grey or black stockings, and a hat, popped in the style of a century Edo, over a little, old, withered face. Round his neck is an Elizabethan ruff, and frills of lace are at his wrists. On the wild west coast, where the Atlantic winds bring almost constant rains, he dispenses with ruff and frills and wears a frieze overcoat over his pretty red suit, so that, Unless on the lookout for the cocked hat, you might pass a leprechaun on the road and never know it's himself that's in it at all. This dress could vary by region, however, in Cowley's account, there were differences between leprechauns or lorrimans from different regions. The northern leprechaun or lorrimen wore a military red coat and white breeches, with a broad brimmed high, pointed hat, on which he would sometimes stand upside down. The Lurigodon of Tipperary wore an antique slashed jacket of red, with peaks all round and a jackie cap, also sporting a sword, which he uses as a magic wand. The Luricon of Carry was a fat, pussy little fellow whose jolly round face rivals in redness the cutaway jacket he wears, that always has seven rows of seven buttons in each row. The Cluricon of Monaghan wore a swallow-tailed evening coat of red with green vest, white breeches, black stockings, shinny shoes, and a long con hat without a brim, sometimes used as a weapon. In a poem entitled The Leprechaun, or Fairy Showmaker, 18th century Irish poet William Ellingham describes the appearance of the leprechaun as the wrinkled, wizened and, and bearded elf, spectacles stuck on his pointed nose, silver buckles to his hose, neither apron, shoe in his lap. The modern image of the leprechaun sitting on a toadstool, having a red beard and green hat, it is clearly a more modern invention, 
or borrowed from other strands of European folklore. The most likely explanation for the modern-day leprechaun appearance is that green is a traditional national Irish color dating back as far as 1642. The hat might be derived from the style of outdated fashion still common in Ireland in the 19th century. This style of fashion was commonly worn by Irish immigrants to the United States. Since some Elizabethan era clothes were still common in Ireland in the 19th century long after they were out of fashion, as depicted by the stage Irish. The buckle shows and other garments also have their origin in the Elizabethan period in Ireland. It is interesting to note that leprechauns are often associated with wealth, particularly gold coins, but they are virtually cobblers, which you would hardly presume is a lucrative vacation. Nonetheless, the mouth of the pot of gold persists and there are still people who go looking for this hidden treasure. This is the most common of all leprechaun mites, which says that they find gold cones buried in the earth and store them all in a pot which is hidden at the end of a rainbow. The fact that a rainbow doesn't have a fixed spot or a real one should be discounted for the sake of the story. Quite why leprechauns even need gold is another matter entirely since they can't actually spend it. Some researchers suggest that this gold is used as a means of tricking humans and given the leprechaun's propensity for trickery, this is entirely possible. In most Irish folklore tales featuring the leprechaun, he is depicted as a rogue who will deceive whenever he can. In rare cases where humans catch leprechauns in tales, they're easily outsmarted by the magical creature that often uses a person's greed against him. Unless you are an expert in all things leprechaun, there are a few facts about the mystical trickster that may surprise you. The image of leprechauns has been updated and now the legend serves as something of a tourist attraction which lures a huge amount of American tourists, in particular to Ireland. The leprechaun has really captured the imagination of Americans and features as Notre Dame's mascot and the symbol's Lucky Charms cereal. Of course, not everything related to leprechauns is fun or particularly tasteful, as can be seen in the awful leprechaun movie starring Warwick Davis. It is fair to say that many Irish people are irritated by the ethnic stereotypes perpetuated by leprechauns, but that is a tale of morality that can be taken from the fable of the leprechaun. The fact that they often trick people who seek the pot of gold can be taken as a warning to people not to be invested in get-rich-quick schemes. Additionally, you should not look to take what isn't yours nor should you interfere with things beyond your understanding. Ultimately, tales of the leprechaun are not to be taken seriously and should only serve to amuse and delight us. Films, television cartoons and advertising have popularized a specific image of leprechauns which bears little resemblance to anything found in the cycles of Irish folklore. It has been added that the popularized image of a leprechaun is little more than a series of stereotypes based on derogatory 19th century caricatures. Many Celtic music groups have used the term leprechaun leprechauns as part of their naming convention or as an album title. Even popular forms of American music have used the mythological character, including heavy metal, Celtic metal, punk rock and jazz. In America, Leprechauns are often associated with St. Patrick's Day along with the color green and shamrocks. The leprechaun is related to the cluricon and the far darigan that he is a solitary creature. Some writers even go as far as to substitute the second to let's well-known spirits for the leprechaun in stories or tales to reach a wider audience. The cluricon is considered by some to be merely a leprechaun on a drinking spree. Thanks for watching the video. Sign up and leave a like.